I'm taking a pass on the household survey. I wonder what Michelle thinks of that. I'd give her a chance to, to, to chime in in just a second. But I will say I like the way you set it up. There's some good and bad stuff in there. Look, anytime you're going to put more Americans to work, it's a good thing. We maintain the participation rate. The wage growth was a little bit less. So all of that, I think, was pretty positive. And the market is taking it pretty well. They're, they really took to heart. I, I don't know if I want to call it the Jefferson pause or the Harker skip. What's the right way to put it? I don't know who deserves it. It's really a, a something I think that ultimately came from Powell. But I think Jefferson is the one who's going to be tagged with it. So um, really no change at all in the outlook for the Fed, despite a high, uh, a, a high headline number. The revisions, of course, also were in the way of higher numbers. So that tells you that there's still real momentum in, in, in the job market. Michelle, what do you say? Yeah, I mean, Steve, so much of what you say is what I would echo. We were looking at that same statistic, the you know the the adjusted uh, household number that aligns it more with the establishment uh, survey that that always gathers the headlines. And actually, that that household measure adjusted was up even more right. um, in this month than than what the payroll number showed. So, but but you know there were other areas. The hours work numbers were a little bit weaker. I think the earnings numbers, of course, got getting a lot of focus. I mean, if the labor market. Is is strong, but you're not seeing the wage pressures coming uh, through from that, then that gives the Fed more uh, more room to take this pause. So, you know, I, I think we, that's, you know, where we'll come out. There's enough in this report that doesn't force the Fed to, to have to move this month. They can, you know, and, and we even think that the CPI numbers are going to be somewhat um, troublesome for the markets. We think this will be probably the last high print, but we've got a relatively high core rate expectation. Even with that, though, we think the Fed ends up skipping this month, but setting the table for actions in, in July. Michelle, um, I know people come to you and, and, and probably to me, too, and say, I need an answer now. But my mm -hmm. answer is I really can't tell you now. And because the reason is when we have had these bumps up in unemployed people, folks, if you have that chart of the difference in the unemployed month to month in the back there, what you'll see is a, it looks like a sawtooth pattern. We get an increase of the unemployed. And then it seems to go away. So maybe this last one, which is bigger than the prior ones of the month, you can see there, maybe this is the beginning of something. But certainly that pattern is not a recessionary pattern, uh, Kelly, when we, 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 we have an increase in unemployed, and then they come back, and they go away, then they go down, and up and out. We can't make a call. Maybe in a month or two I can make a call. That may be late for you to make a call, and this is a recession, but I can't do it from the data. Michelle? Well, that's why we look at the house, I'm sorry, the employment survey or the establishment survey as opposed to the household numbers right. because they are so volatile month to month. I think, too, when you step back, there isn't a lot to corroborate the weakness in the in the household numbers in the sense that we haven't seen claims jump up. There hasn't been, you know, other evidence that, you know, you would have expected to support that weakness in the in the household survey. So I think all of this together has to have you leaning to the fact that the labor market still has a lot of strength. I mean notwithstanding that jump in the unemployment rate. Michelle, one thing that we can give people a beat on, I don't know if you've had the same experience as I have, but using the high-frequency data, it's not always right, but it's been giving a good read of upside and downside surprises. And I'm talking about UKG, and I'm talking about home base. Even AVP has done a good job of telling us not the level of employment. So that is something that if you listen to our reporting during the week, I know Michelle picks this up in her previews that... We're giving people an idea of, is it tending towards the upside or towards the downside? And what we've not been able to do, because some of this data is so new, is to calibrate it to an actual level of employment growth. But we had the same you know, reaction in terms of those ADP numbers, for example. The fact that you know, the, the way that the measurement has, has changed has seemed to have given it. It's, it's just given us a really good lead on certainly the direction of, of the payroll numbers. It's been a lot more reliable. So as, as this is kind of gets back to what we were saying, looking through, it is obviously a lot of noise in this number. But if you step back in more holistically looking at all of the labor market indicators, they do tend to still point toward more strength, not much sign of a sharp moderation. Do you then think, Michelle, this is kind of a debate we've been having all day long, but it's really the whole debate in the markets. Do you think that the Fed is done? Or do you think that even if they skip that there could be a lot more hikes or you know what I mean? So our forecast, and Steve, you'll remember, we, we, we had this debate going into the last meeting um, where we, you know, our forecast has really been that the Fed can be done because we do think the economy is going to weaken as we move toward the, you know, later in the year.